Mr. Johnson, you still under oath? Yes, ma'am. Thank you. Yes, ma'am. My lady, Leonard says, says, Mr. Johnson, one final issue. Your cellular phone number was read out in court yesterday. Did you know about that? My lady, yes, I'm aware of that. I... Uh, how did you become aware of that? During the morning session of the court proceedings, my phone started ringing incessantly. And the first call that I answered, um, the person informed me that, or asked whether I'm aware of the fact that my telephone number was read out in court. I informed the person that I'm not aware, and I also informed him that I am, have not testified, so please do not um, relate any of the details of the, of the proceedings to me. Yes, ju just try to, be, try to be a little bit louder. I beg your pardon. Yes. So what I said was the person asked me whether I was aware that my number was read out in court. I then said to the person I'm not, I was not aware that it was read out in court as I'm waiting a waiting witness in the witness rooms. And I also proceeded to ask them not to relate any details of the proceedings to me as I have not testified yet. And um, then we ended the phone call. And thereafter I received, I turned my phone off and I received, when I turned it on there were a large amount or no, large number of missed phone calls and um, one voicemail message left from an overseas person. Just a moment. We will not go through all the messages, but the, uh, this one particular message, uh, could you tell the court, um, you, you saved it on your phone, the message that you were relaying. I have it saved on my phone. Uh, what, what did it say? Something to the tune of, I couldn't make out whether it was Mr. or Mrs. Berger. The person said, why are you lying in court about, uh, we know Oscar didn't kill Reba. It's not cool. Come on, man. Something of that nature. I can't remember exactly, but it was in a way intimidating. And since then, you haven't checked your phone for other messages? Well, it keeps on ringing, my lady, so I keep it turned off. It's, it's a, quite a, an inconvenience. I've owned that telephone number for close to 15 years. All my personal and business contacts um, know me by that number. So my, I feel my privacy has been compromised severely. I've nothing further. Thank you very much. Yes, Mr. Roo. Thank you, my lady. <clears throat> Mr. Johnson, if I may ask you, please, and it might be difficult for you, but otherwise I have to move closer. I, I really have difficulty in hearing you. you some distance away from me. Uh, so please, if it's possible, I know it's difficult for you in court, and, and, and you mm. may concentrate on different oh, things, uh, but if you can speak up a little bit. Sure, I'll try my best to speak up. Please. Louder. Where were you when your wife testified in court? I was at the back in the witness rooms. I was at the back at, of the, the court building, the first floor in the witness rooms. And you were basically available should it have been requested of you to give evidence directly after your wife? Lady, that is correct. You did not listen to a television broadcast of her evidence or to a radio broadcast of her evidence? Lady, I avoided all media broadcasts. That includes radio, television, electronic media, printed media, Twitter, um, and avoided uh, telephone conversations with my friends. I would re respond with a an SMS informing them that I will discuss or I will call them back after I've testified. So I've done my utmost best to avoid any um, exposure to proceedings in court. You also knew that because both you and your wife were coming to give evidence that it would be advisable and correct not to discuss your evidence and her evidence with you. That is correct, my lady. So can I assume then that you two refrain from discussing what she would say to the court and what you would tell to the court? Absolutely. 
you, in her evidence, she made it clear that she did not read your statement. My impression was she did not want to read your statement, the post to by you to the police. And can I? Just one minute, Mr. Lee. What is that disturbance? What is it? Pardon? Please can stand up. What is it? Okay. You know, I just, I just want to say this to you, please. I hope this is the last time I reprimand somebody in court. I don't like it. Assume that you would equally not have read a statement to sort of not compromise your evidence. My lady, that is correct. I've never read or heard her statement that she made um, to Captain Van Art. In fact, I was not even present when, when it occurred. And I also did not read the notes, her personal notes, that she made to herself um, as advised by Advocate Nikki Maritz. So it seems then to me to summarize this, when you realized from that time about a year ago that you were going to be a witness and your wife was going to be a witness, you deliberately refrain from discussing the matter. That's one, is that correct? Uh, Two, from exchanging notes on the matter. Can I just, my lady, can I reply to the first question? We discussed the, the matter, but not each other's evidence, um, more just in support to each other. It was a traumatic experience. Yeah. Just, just the emotional side, but not the merit, not the factual content. Absolutely. Yes. You also deliberately did not read her statement, and she deliberately did not read your statement. That is correct, my lady. You also did not exchange any notes on it. That is correct. Yesterday, you also sanitized, you blocked yourself out from any influence what the evidence might have been in court. That is correct. We saw that your wife, she concluded the testimony, she left court, and then we saw her coming back into court again when you entered the court to testify. That is correct. Now, let's look at some of the things. In your evidence, and first of all, if I may ask the state to make exhibit N, that's for Nelly, that is my lady and learned assessors, that is this witness's statement. Available. Thank you. Whilst we're finding the statement, in the meantime, I just want you to identify that that is indeed the statement that you deposed to, where, to Mr. Van Aert. Can I, can I confirm yes, this is my that, wife's statement? No, not your wife, I want your statement. It's exhibit N, just make sure that that's indeed your statement and that's the statement that you made to Captain Van Aert and it's your signature. Yes, my lady, I can And my talk. understanding is that Mr. Van Art was very professional. You told him your version. He took it down, as policemen must do. He read it back to you. You were satisfied. Then you signed it, and you took the oath. You affirmed the correctness of the statement. 
That is correct, my lady. And you were satisfied that your statement reflected a true position of the events? According to my observations that evening, no. I believe this is accurate. Yes. And as your statement was made at a time that was relatively close to the event, the events would have been sort of fresh in your memory. It was not a long time. It was a month after the incident. That is correct, my lady. Yes. Now, I want to ask you certain things about it, Mr. Johnson, <coughs> if you would bear with me. I'm going to deal with a number of aspects that I will argue to the court that it's striking that you were yesterday in a position in your evidence of chief to testify about it. I'm going to start with the first one and let me immediately preface it by saying to you the first point that I'm going to raise would seem to be really insignificant and that is when you went to bed. And I know it doesn't matter really on the merits of the case whether you went to bed at 9 o'clock, 10 o'clock, 11 or 12 o'clock or 8 o'clock. But it will be used in conjunction with other points. So I'm sorry about the first point. But what was interesting about your evidence yesterday is this. That you say that in your evidence that you went to bed between 9 and 10. You remember that? I do, that is correct. <laughs> now, of course, how insignificant it might be. What was interesting that in your statement, as you will see, you say that you went to bed approximately 9 o'clock. However, in your wife's evidence, she used exactly the same time, not approximately 9 o'clock, but that you went to bed between 9 and 10, the same as your evidence yesterday. Must I respond, my lady? Yes. Um, I don't find it's, it's funny. It's our routine. We are highly routinely based people. And um, if you have to ask me what time I went to bed two weeks ago, I would confidently ans answer between 9 and 10. That's how we yes. go to bed, we finish up and the, retire the between point, those hours. Mr. Johnson, the point is maybe different. While she would so confidently answer between 9 and 10, that was not your statement. But we'll get to the other points. This is a small one. Your statement was approximately 9 o'clock and not between 9 and 10. It is just a coincidence, perhaps, that your wife testified that it was between 9 and 10, and yesterday when you testified, yours were also then, contrary to your statement, between 9 and 10. That's all I put to you. But it's not because you've discussed it with your wife. Not at no. all. Good. Now, the second point is this. You can go through your statement, and I will not mislead the court, but in paragraph 5 of your statement, 4 and 5, you deal with making a call to the security and the wrong security and whatever, not too important. But what you don't deal with was what was the situation at that time with the woman screaming? You agree? My lady, that is correct. You don't deal with it in your statement. Now, will you accept it when I put it to you that likewise, and the statement is before court as exhibit M, likewise, your wife deals with the telephone call to security and also 
in a statement does not deal with what, whether they were screaming at that time. <coughs> will you accept that? I accept that, yes. Yeah. Or whether she heard screaming or whether they were screaming, whatever, same as yours. Both of you did, in your statements did not deal with it. However, in cross-examination, I asked her about it. And she said words to the effect that at that time she was not focusing on concentrating on the screaming because of the telephone. You understand? I do. Of significance yesterday, without the state prompting you, no question from the state in that regard, you tendered evidence consistent with that of your wife that she had not deal, dealt with in her affidavit to say, stay and ask you about it. I didn't pay any attention to any sounds coming from the house or the direction. How is that? How is that that your wife was cross-examined? It's not in your statement. It is not in her statement. She was then cross-examined about the screaming at the time of the telephone call. And she said that she was focusing on something else, meaning she didn't pay attention. You then, out of your own accord, without the state asking you, go there and say, without anyone asking you, I didn't pay attention to that. How's that? But it's, it's quite simple. It's um, notes that I made to myself after the advice of advocate Nikki Moritz um, and I've obviously re reviewed those notes to remind myself that's a note that I made that I was not I did not um, pay attention or wasn't aware of any sounds that came from the, the direction of where the, the incident happened because I was focusing on the telephone call can we see the notes I, I don't have a printed copy can available someone go, can you tell someone where it is and go and fetch it while she's in court that we can look at the notes. I have no problem with that. I have a copy on my iPad, which is in the witness room back. Well, so we can print it. And those notes were made before your statement. That is correct, yes. And you agree that, that you give that note to Captain Van Aert? I did not. I informed him about it, my lady, and he said I must keep it in a safe place. And your first statement that you made to the two policemen that came, where is that? Did you keep a copy of I that? I did not receive a copy of that, lady. It was a, I would term it as a, a just a casual conversation relating. Did, did, did you not make a written statement? Not that first evening, my lady. Not the first evening, sorry. You just referred to that statement in your evidence. Yeah, so th there were two visits. The one evening was by the two investigating officers, my lady. And then in the following week, Captain, or oh, your pardon, Captain Mike van Aert contacted me, made an appointment, and that's when I made my first official statement. Your iPad will, of course, show when you put the notes on your iPad. Did you put it on at that time, or was it more recent? Milady, I have a copy. The, the, the notes were made on my personal laptop computer, and um, I have not I've kept it there, a, a copy. Last night, I converted the um, notes to a PDF format and transferred it to my iPad. So we will be able to see when the first note was made. My lady, I, I think it would be possible to derive that from the, the file history. From the but we will get it during the, the adjournment. We'll get the notes and you sh surely you, you're satisfied to show it to us. Absolutely. And what caused you to make that note? It was, my lady, it was on the advice of advocate Nicky Moritz. He said that um, normally these cases take a very long time before they are heard before a court and your memory will fade so he advised us to make notes in as much detail as we can remember to rely on to refresh your memory later on but, but it's a bit different because this is not a note of what you observed it's a note of what you did not observe it's a negative that's why I'm asking 
my lady, the note, the content of the note describes the entire experience. What I, do, I make explicit mention of the fact that I did not pay attention to the um, sounds from the, the direction of where the, the ladies' okay. screams were coming. It's one sentence and, and probably a one and a half page document. We'll, we'll, we'll look at the notes. That's, that's not Very important. Well. Again. Now let's go to the next point. In your statement, and I want you to read it out, paragraph six. Just before the shots. I can help you. It says, You see that? I do. Now, in your wife's statement, she says the same thing in paragraph six. Akadi Krauch Wurfel, meaning I heard the woman screaming <coughs> or yelling. I accept that. Yes. However, in your evidence, you then describe the screaming. You define that. You said that it was more intense, you could hear the fear. You remember that? Would that be correct? Are you referring to my, my testimony yesterday? Yes. Yes, my lady, I remember that. Is that in your note? I can't recall. Yes. Now, what is significant? In your wife's evidence, not in a statement, she also defines or describes just the one word, chul, or the yell, or the scream, to say that it was more intense and she could hear the fear, exactly the same. And it is, it is remarkable that it is not in her statement, not in your statement. She testified about it to describe, and you come and you testify about it in the same manner. Can you explain that? It's, I, I, would, I would venture a guess that it's the way you verbally tell the story. Yes, it, it There's a lot more emotion um, involved when you <coughs> convey the experience, yes. um, where the statement is more factual uh, recollection. Well, let's go on. Let's go to screams. If you look at paragraph six, I read to you, first the Afrikaans, Ek het die vrou gehoor gul, en toe is sarsie skote gehoor. To translate, I heard a woman screaming, and then I heard a volley of shots. Are you satisfied with my translation? I'm satisfied. That's what you meant to tell the person that took the statement from you? That is correct, yes. Yes. In your wife's statement, it starts the same. She heard the woman screaming and then four shots. You just had a volley of shots. She had four I heard the woman screaming and then the shots. So that's in her statement, that's in your statement. However, in her evidence, she said, and she used now explicit words, that she heard the screaming also during the shots. You have that? Yes, I do. You come to court yesterday, and you testified now with explicit language that you don't have to infer from it that you heard the shots, the screams, also heard screams during the shots. Do you agree? I agree. That is yes. exactly what I heard. Let's go to the first one. For, for, uh, next one. Let's go to your statement, paragraph six. You say, and I first read the Afrikaans that you can find it. The last gul was net na die laaste skoot. 
into three seconds, meaning the last screen was just after the last shot, plus minus one to two seconds. Do you have that? I do. Your wife's evidence, uh, not evidence, statement. The woman gave the last screen about two seconds after the shots. You see that? But when your wife came to give evidence, she said the following. She said that the last screen, when she said, I heard the voice fading away with the last screen. Significantly, when you gave evidence yesterday, as it was not stated in your statement and your wife's statement, but in her evidence, you said the following. The last scream, it faded moments after the shot. The fading. She spoke about the fading of the screen after the last shot, and you speak about the fading. How is that? <coughs> in... When, when we had to testify, my lady, or not testify, make the statement, I used the indication of seconds to indicate a very short duration. Um, I chose different words. Um, if I have to describe it verbally, that's how I would e explain it. Um, I think the one or two seconds perhaps came in response to a question from Captain Van Aert, how long? Um, I'm, I'm fairly certain that I would have given him a, a, a similar um, version, verbal explanation of moments after the last shot, the last scream faded away. Mr. And then I think he asked me how long were the moments and to try and peg a time frame on it, I pr probably said one or two seconds or it could be half a second. Mr. Johnson, it's not about the time. It's about the exact same word. Not in your statements, only in her evidence. Fading. And then in your evidence. Fading. That's what it's all about. Now, it may be a remarkable coincidence, but I'm dealing with six of them now in a row. You understand? I've taken the first one the time, where it then became exactly her time. And so I went through it. I don't want to repeat it. I'm now with the one fading. Will you, do you want to give an explanation again about the coincidence of using the same word that she used on a cross-examination that was not part of your statement? Lady, I'm satisfied with my explanation. Would it be part of your notes? Uh, my lady can, um, I took a group, just quali clarify what you are referring to. You know your notes that you have on your laptop? I mean, what, what in the notes? The fading. <sighs> we would have to go and yes, look at the notes, see. my lady. Of course. Well, let's go on, Mr. Johnson. Let's go to paragraph six of your statement. In your statement, paragraph 6, when you describe the shots, you refer to it. I first give you the Afrikaans. You say, and to a sarsi scooter, then a volley of shots. <coughs> we all know in Afrikaans and in English a volley exactly what it is. Now, your wife gave evidence to say after the first shot there was a small pause. Not couldn't give the time, but it was a small pause. When you gave evidence yesterday, what did you say about the duration between the shots instead of a volley of shots? What did you say? Can you remember? I recall, my lady, that I testified that there was a pause between the first shot and the, follow the shots that followed. A, a small pause 
between the first shot and the other shots. Exactly the same as your wife's evidence. Not in her statement, not in your statement. You agree? I how, agree. How is that? Is that a coincidence? <coughs> Milady, I, I don't think it's such a big coincidence if two people stand 10 meters apart from each other witnessing the same incident that they would have, would have such similar recollections of the, of the event. It is not that, Mr. Johnson. It is where it differs from your statement. It is not the same. It's not contained in your statement. And it was in her evidence. And then it is in your evidence. And then I start to understand, or maybe not understand, why you did not give evidence directly after your wife's evidence? You were available. What was in it? Why did you not just not come and give evidence after her evidence? My lady, is Mr. Rue referring to yesterday? Yes. I did give... No. Oh, I, I don't know. Mr. van der Merwe was called in between, so as uh, oh, to yes. have that opening period. Yeah. My lady... Um, I'm sure she wouldn't mind me volunteering this information. She was extremely nervous and kept on saying to us, she cannot take another day of this. She wants to go carry on with her life. And I think for that reason, Advocate Nell obliged and gave her the opportunity <coughs> to testify yesterday. When, when did she tell you that? After her evidence? Milady, no, that was during our period that we waited there. She said she was going to request that she could testify. During what period? Um, Milady, it's during the period that we waited in the witness room, um, the, pa the past day or two. The, the two of you waiting in the witness room, when was that? Um, all the witnesses are congregated together in a, in a room at, on the first floor. In the same room? That is correct. You and your wife as well? Uh, before she testified, she, we were there together. And um, during the breaks, I saw her once or twice. So you saw really? your wife during the breaks and after an evidence? Because there was nothing stopping you to come give evidence. You saw her again, Mr. Johnson. Milady, I don't think it's so strange we lived together. We were going to be together. I, I'm not asking if it's strange. I just want to put a factual position before the court. You saw her again after her evidence and before you gave evidence. You came into the box. That is correct, my yes. But yet you would say all these remarkable points of similarity between your evidence not to be found in your statement and a statement that we could ascribe to coincidence. Milady, I don't think it's coincidence. When my wife testified, she, she's been an aerobic instructor for close to 20 years, part-time hobby, so she counts rhythms and numbers. She plays piano up to a quite advanced level, so instinctively she counts it. I don't. I don't pay attention to that detail. That's yes. why I couldn't say they were four. Sh uh, they were exactly four shots. I estimated five or six. I think. Mr. Mine Johnson, knows. maybe I must stop you. You don't know what you're doing to yourself, because that was solely in her evidence, what you've just said, and not in a statement. What you have just told the court is to confirm what I'm putting to you over and over. And here you come and you tender it. You did not discuss the matter you said before the time I asked you all the questions. And now she told you about counting because of her musical background, the shots. That was in her evidence, not in her statement. It's, it's something we discussed and we said we wonder why she would remember the, the exact number. And that's what our conclusion was. So was that after her evidence before you came in? No, my lady. It was way back. Um, I, th I think even before we made our statements, that there was quite a long period after the event until we made our first statements. You, you see, Mr. Johnson, you told the court, I asked you right in the beginning, 
but for emotional support. After your statements, you did not discuss it. That aspect is not in her statement. It came out when she was confronted on hearing the four shots and why she could say it's four shots. It was not something old. It came out in cross-examination, or in examination chief, I can't remember, but in her evidence, not in a statement. You saw her after her evidence, and now you come without me asking you. You tendered an additional coincidence. That's what I'm putting to you. You discussed the evidence, and I will argue to the court, it is just too remarkable that there was, that you did not come and give evidence after your wife, first call someone else, let you and your wife be together, make sure that you patch and that the evidence is consistent, like fading, like pause between the shots, now like the music counting, you understand? You understand what I put to you, Mr. Johnson? You shake your head. Do you, do you understand? I, I understand what the advocate is saying, but I can honestly tell you we did not discuss her evidence. I, I mean her testimony. Yes. I can yeah. give you my honest word. You know, in my experience, I don't want to say it's applicable to you, but once witnesses start to introduce the word honestly, then I wonder about it because right from the beginning it should have been mm. honestly. You don't have to say it. What worries me? Mr. Johnson, let me explain something to you. This court is really entitled to something, and that is that witnesses come to court not contaminated, uncontaminated, give that independent version so that the court can listen to this witness and to the other one because witnesses are not always reliable. Sometimes they're not lying, but it's many times there are many times a reliability issue. And the only way to satisfy yourself then about reliability is to maintain a strong independence in versions. You have not favored the court with that, Mr. Johnson, you and your wife. I'm sorry, I put it to you. You could just as well stood together in the witness box. That's what I put to you. What do you say to that? I don't Aren't agree you with going your a bit too far, Mr. Rowe? Maybe I, I, I would. I want it's for the court to decide, my lady. I won't take it to that. Mm. I, I, I withdraw that. Okay. Now, Mr. Mr. Johnson. The screening that you say in your evidence that you heard when you back on the balcony. You said it was screaming and then a shot. How long was that screaming? Milady, it's a long time ago. I can't recall in exact detail. So you have a difficulty, and that's fair, I understand it, Mr. Johnson. You have a difficulty when you think, and maybe you experience that as traumatic. You have a difficulty to remember accurately when you're back on the balcony, you heard screaming, but how long if it was short or long? You, you can't remember. All I can offer you is that I heard screaming. You don't know if it was long before the shots or short before the shots. You only remember screaming, is that correct? It was, it's, it's difficult to judge the, the um, amount of time that lapsed. So, and, and my short might be your long. Yes. So I, I don't want to peg a time on it. It was, <laughs> there were the screams and then the shot started. Your, your wife spoke, but maybe if you don't know, then you don't know. Spoke about moments, but you can't remember. It's not that I, it's, I can't put a time duration on it. It was, it didn't feel like long. It didn't feel like long, um, but the whole experience didn't feel like very long. And we know that you're standing outside on the balcony when you hear what you describe as shots. And so when I refer to shots, please understand me, John, Mr. Johnson, that I'm not submitting to you 
that they were indeed shot. I'll come back to that. But just for ease of reference, I refer to them for present purposes as shots. So let me repeat again, just to put that to you. You were standing outside on the balcony, and your wife was inside the house when you heard the shots. That is correct, my lady. But you were not able to hear the number of the shots, the number. My lady, I did not count the shots. I heard uh, a, n a number of shots, but I did not count them. I estimated five or six shots. Mm. Was it difficult to count them at the time, is it, or just because that you, as you said here, that it's a long time ago and it's difficult to remember? It was even afterwards, my lady. Shortly afterwards, in my in my first versions of the events, I also did not know how many shots were fired. I only learned that afterwards. Um, you also, sorry, the last part, I couldn't hear you. I said that only afterwards I'd learned that from probably in the media or perhaps um, Captain Mike van Art. It was confirmed by some other person or source. Maybe I understand now, Peter, one of the things that you said in your evidence yesterday when you spoke about people that you assumed that there were many people much closer to Mr. Pistorius's house then you added that would have a much clearer recollection and would have heard more clearly what had happened you that is, that that is correct yesterday? It that tells correct, me something that you acknowledged that there was some problem. It was not that clear and your recollection was not that good because that's why you defer to or hoping to defer to people that would have heard clearer. I would do that not, be unfair? My lady, I do not agree with that statement. What did you mean to say by saying with a much clearer recollection and that would have heard more clearly? people closer that would have heard more clearly. Yeah. What I meant that is that the assumption is the closer you are, the more detail you can hear. The, excuse me, I couldn't hear. The, I, I'm so sorry that I do that to you. I have difficulty in here. What, what I said, my lady, is that my assumption was if you were closer, if there were purple, be people closer to the, the house, um, they would be able to hear more clearly and perhaps more detail. Who was first to wake up that morning because of what you say, the screaming? My lady, I woke up first. So you woke up first, and it's, if I look at your evidence, your wife, you heard the scream that you thought you woke up by the screaming. You then listened, you heard the scream again, and then you jumped up. Is that not so? My lady, can I just ask the advocate to repeat that statement, please? Thank you, I will. You woke up, of course it's difficult, you were sleeping, thinking, thinking that it was a scream. You then listened, you heard a scream again, and then you jumped out of bed. That is correct, my lady. And it is only then, if I look at your evidence, when you jumped out of bed, that your wife woke up. I'm a, yes, that is what she told me. Yes. And now you're up. What is the position that you hear the scream then again when you're on the balcony? Yes, my lady, I ran out to the balcony and the, the next screams that I observed was when I was outside on the balcony. Yes. So let's deal with this. You woke up, there's uncertainty what woke you up because you said you listen now carefully to make sure, then you heard the scream. Yes, the second right. screams was a confirmation that I heard correctly, the, the first scream. Yes, the first one, there was uncertainty. I'm not saying they didn't hear, but there was uncertainty. Let's be, go straight to that point. So the first scream is uncertainty, but the second scream, you could hear it now, and that caused you to jump up. That is correct, my yes. lady. 
Then let's call it the third screen. Let's give the first one also a title as the first screen. The third screen you heard when you were on the balcony. That is correct. And how many screams were there? That was that. That was then the woman screaming, help, and you heard a man just after that screaming, help, help, help. No, there were, my lady, there were, when I got to the balcony, there were just screams, and I stood there for a short time. It's difficult for me to give you an indication how long it was. And then listening to hear if I can hear any detail. And then the lady person sh screamed help, and it was followed by a man sh uh, shouting help, help. Yeah, just to, if I may rewind, Mr. Johnson, you said, and correctly so, that was your evidence, and you also said in your, today that your wife told you that, she confirmed to you, that after the first scream, you jumped out of bed, that caused your wife to wake up. You're jumping out of bed, you then ran to the balcony, correct this far? That is correct. Then on the balcony, you again then heard the scream, or screaming. That is correct, my lady. So what we do know from this is that when your wife woke up, you would have been on the balcony and that would be the first time that she would hear the screaming, when you're on the balcony, according to your version. It's possible. Yes, according to your version. But then we know one thing. On your version, your wife was not awakened by screaming. She was woke up. She, she woke up because of you jumping out of the bed. And that was at the time after the scream and you going to the balcony. That must be correct. Can I just confirm? You're saying my wife woke up? We've confirmed that because of you jumping out of the bed and yes. then running to the balcony. At that time, there was no screaming. It was a scream before you jumped up, and the next scream was when you were in the balcony. We have went through this. I would accept that, yes. So what I'm saying to you on your version, your wife did not wake up because of screaming. On your version. In fact, I... On your version, I that's would, all I said. I would think so, yes. I think when I asked her when she woke up and she said when I jumped out of bed. Yes. We've gone through this. I, only saying on your versions, it's not difficult. Mm. Then, although you regarded this area, areas, neighborhoods, estates, it's extremely safe. There was a first association that entered your mind when you heard the screaming. And that was, there's a house robbery, a house breaking or a house robbery, a dangerous situation. That is correct, my lady. It was never in your mind House robberies do not happen in these areas. Cannot be, it must be domestic violence. Correct? That is correct. That is unfortunately, and I cannot emphasize it more, that is unfortunately a way of thinking. Not so. That is that's correct, yes. I agree. We exposed to house robberies and the violence associated with that. You shake your head? Yes. You nod on me? Yes. It's That's so. True. You, in fact, you, that thought that you harbored that it was a house robbery was still part of your thinking after the shooting. M Mr. That, is, that is correct, my lady, yes. If I may remind you, it's not for me to do it, and I understand it's, it's mm -hmm. a human thing Sorry. to do, do not, but unfortunately, it must be recorded. So if you maybe could focus on that just to, instead of do. nodding, say yes when it's a yes. I will do, it. my apologies. <coughs> Yeah.
you also believe, and this was also in discussions with your wife, that what would have happened at that house was an assumption, of course, was that they shot the husband. They killed the husband. That is correct, my lady. And that would be not because it was a screaming of a woman that was being threatened, but one that was fearful because of the concern for the safety of her husband. If I could sum it up. I, my lady, I, I wouldn't, those were not my thoughts exactly, um, that it was for the safety of her husband. Our interpretation was that, my interpretation at that point was that they were, these people were being attacked in their house. Yes. Um, so both Yes, I, I can take you to parts in your evidence and deal with that, or I can ask you again your explanation and that of your wife and the discussion between you was this, that you thought that they had shot the husband. That is correct, my lady. Yes. If, of course, at that time you thought that the woman was about to be shot and not her husband, that would have been the discussion. It would have been this we didn't think it was a husband that was going to be shot, but hang on, I can hear it is this woman that's in danger. She is about to be shot. That was not your discussion. That is correct, and the reason is that we heard the screams before, during, and yes. that last scream. Um, we didn't hear the man again, and therefore we assumed something had happened to him. Yes. You didn't associate that the woman would be shot and still during the shots would scream. It would rather be the man was shot. That was our assumption. Correct, ma'am. One thing, of course, that you will say is that you're absolutely certain, I assume, that what you heard were gunshot wounds. Gunshots? Yes. I'm convinced that I heard gunshots. Absolutely, sir. lady. And you would have known about the debate about the cricket bat hitting a Maranti door. Not so. Um, well, I'm not certain what the debate advocate Cruz is you, did not, to. you don't know about the bat, a cricket bat hit, banging a door? I am aware of the fact that the door was broken down with a cricket bat, my lady. Who told you that? Uh, I, I think I read it somewhere, my lady, uh, following the proceedings um, in the bail hearing. But you can say, as you sit there, those noises, I assume, did not come from someone taking a cricket bat and hitting a hard door, a maranti door. Or don't you know? My lady, I'm certain that I heard gunshots. I'm familiar with the sound of gunshots. Yes. I'm going to show you something, because I knew you would say this somehow. I'm going to show you something. And I want you to listen very, very carefully. You have the exact time, you and your wife, of the shooting and the exact duration of the call, not so. 3.16 and the duration of the call was 58 seconds. That is correct, my lady. Yes. We got that from my cell phone yes. record. I accept that. Let us look at your version and the steps. So we know after the call, you threw the telephone down and you ran back to the balcony. That is correct, my lady. Would have been very quick. Yes, it's, it's approximately 10 meters, yes. my lady. We know now we at 3.17. Because the call was 316, 58 seconds to 317. We now in 317 when you hear the shots, screaming the shots. That is that I, I accept that. Let me share with you something. I want to share a time with you. You can make a note of it. 3, 19 and 30 seconds. One 
and a half minute approximately later. The accused, Mr. Pistorius, called Mr. Stunder for help. And on his version, we know one thing. He called Mr. Standard shortly. He went, he went into him, but shortly. After breaking down the door, the, the bathroom, the, the toilet door. You take I, I accept I that. I accept that. So let's work back. Let's take the one and a half minute back. Or two minutes. Doesn't matter. To your 317. <coughs> there can only one thing that had happened. Only one thing that you heard. Because it coincides precisely with your time. That's why it was so good of you to give us the exact time. That was the time when he broke down the door. My lady, um, I'm convinced the sounds that I heard were gunshots. Yes. Of and that is my testimony. I understand that. Of course we can say he first broke down the door with the bat, then took insulation tape, put the panels back and shoot holes through it, which we know is nonsense. You agree? That cannot be. <coughs> It doesn't sound yes. so. Let's develop. I object. Is that a question for this witness? That could have been. Do you agree? That's not a question for the witness. The witness should be questioned. For, for Mr. Root to say that this is possible, that somebody would take isolation tape, is creating an atmosphere. It's not a question for this witness. I object to that kind of question. Yes, Mr. Root. My lady, I'm putting a proposition and I'm showing to the witness why it could not be the other one. That is all I'm doing to show why it could only be the bat. There could only be one other possibility, and that was, of course, when the door was broken down before, but then you had to reassemble the door. And I say, it's not a possibility. I said, that's not an option after that. I said, it cannot be. They helped the witness. Yes, Mr. Nell? I, I, I accept that. I'll allow the question. Thank you, thank you my lady. Yes. Do you understand that, Mr. So I'm, I was not trying to be funny about it. I'm trying to demonstrate the point exact. That that cannot be. And that's the point I'm making at you. That it could only be. We have the times. It could only be. It exactly coincides with that minute. The breaking down of the door. Milady, can I ask the reference to the times? Were they taken from my statement, or were they taken from a central time server, which I would assume the cell phone provider would have available? Mr. Johnson, that, I'm, I'm curious about it, because you explained to us, and we know your cell phone data, we know that's a central data, we know you put it in your statement, you know you would not lie to the policeman and say there's 316 and the duration is 58, you said to us that you checked it. That's why I'm saying to you, and we received that, let me help you. We received from the police the time calls mm. made by the accused. Okay. Exact time calls. Thank you. You understand that? That's why I'm saying to you. And I was at pains to try and demonstrate it yesterday. It's not always about credibility, Mr. Johnson. Right. It is where people sometimes genuinely believe that something had happened. And then when they believe it, that is what they would tell people because they genuinely believe it. It's a different question if it's correct. You understand what I'm saying to you? I understand what you're so saying. So let us take the facts here. You hear that sound. You hear a woman screaming. And I can understand that you believe it was a woman. I come back to it. I can understand it. We just had to listen to another witness's evidence to get the better understanding. It's not too important. I understand you believing, credibility-wise, that it was a woman screaming. I understand you <coughs> believing that the noises that you heard were gunshot voices. I understand that. But you have 
to factor in the following. One, that once you know, subsequently, you get that confirmation for your belief that the woman was shot by Mr. Pistorius. It cements that knowledge cements your belief to the extent that it becomes absolute concrete in your mind. You understand what I put to you? I'm not talking about lying and not lying. It, it cements your belief. It's concrete. Now you genuinely believe it. But there are two problems to your belief. And I'm trying in all fairness, it's a man's life at stake, and all fairness to say, let's look at other possibilities. One thing that does not fit in with your version, in all fairness, is a man screaming for help. Not so. Milady, I am absolutely convinced that I heard a lady and a man screaming. My question was different, Mr. Johnson. Milady, can Advocate Rue please repeat his question? One thing that does not fit in was the man screaming for help. That, that's strange, to say at least. Can Advocate Rue perhaps clarify why he thinks it's strange? Did you not think it was strange when a man, you know now that the man shot his girlfriend, him screaming, help. It doesn't fit in. Milady, that is correct, and that's why yeah. initially I was surprised when I learned yes. what had happened. But now we know a <coughs> second factor, and I'm going to a third one, Mr. Johnson. The second factor is that we can work out the time to the minute when the door was broken down. And that's the time when you were standing on the balcony. We have your time, and we have the time of the call to Mr. Stander. It's not difficult to work out. You understand what I say to you? I understand. Yes. Then there's a third factor. There is a third factor. You didn't go to bed immediately. I could see that you say that you were anxious, you battled to sleep and so on. You agree? That is correct. I was in the bedroom. One thing you did not hear. You did not hear the bashing of a door after the shots. Milady, that is correct. I did not hear yes. those noises. Of course, if you were still asleep and there were then gunshots fired and then a woman screaming, you would not have heard of gunshots. Not so. Sorry, I lost concentration. If you were asleep and you only woke up, if we assume that there were gunshots, mm -hmm then screaming after that. You woke up by the screaming, you would not have heard the gunshots. You'd I don't know yes. how to respond to that question. We know one thing. <coughs> your wife, on your evidence, your wife did not wake up because of screaming. She woke up because of you jumping out of the bed, on your evidence. That is correct. Yes. I'm I want to ask you something else, Mr. Johnson. You went to witnesses, and the one was Heinrich, whoever that is. A lady, that is my next door neighbor. And according to your evidence, he told you that they only woke up from the last shot. That is correct. You have to share that full conversation with me because I was trying to understand the meaning of I only woke up from the last shot. What did he really say to you in a context? My understanding of it, my lady, was that he also confirmed that he heard shots, and that's when he woke up. But he did not hear anything I could not else. hear you. I'm so sorry, Mr. Johnson. My apologies. My understanding of his version that afternoon was that he only heard the last shot, and that's what woke him up. Well, 
last shot would be not a correct description because you don't know if you hear a last shot. What it should rather be, I hear a shot. Because you don't know if it's a first or a last. A first you can know because you hear more. But the last you don't know. You understand? Bloody. So what it must be for me to understand, he heard a shot. It's, it's a possibility, my lady. That's my version is how I remembered it. Yes, I'm, I'm trying to say to you, and I'm, I'm, I have to look through your eyes and listen through your ears. I was not there. All I'm trying to say to you in all fairness, Mr. Johnson, he could not have said anything else but that he had one shot. Because you don't know it's the last or the first shot. You heard one shot, not more, did not hear more than one shot. That's what my testimony was. Mm. Now, of course, we did not take it up with him to say if that was a shot and that that was a cricket bat hitting the door. <coughs> that we don't know. You did not discuss that. Yes, my lady, we did not discuss it. The, uh, you also spoke to another witness, and I'm so sorry, I'm trying to get his name. Also asking about the noise. Can you remember who that was? My lady, I believe it could possibly be the, the neighbors in Silver Woods. Was it a lady? Yes, Dale, Dale Meritz, I get the name now. Yes. Could you tell the court more about that? I've got it now. Um, as I explained yesterday, um, it was the first time we had seen her. It was the Friday afternoon of the um, bail application hearing, or when the verdict was, decision was, was made. And um, we have to stand on our balcony, and then we look over the wall, and we can see each other, and we asked her, it was the first, as I said, the first time after the incident that we had seen Dale, and we asked her whether she had heard anything, and she said no. Um, they didn't hear anything, and then mentioned that they have an air conditioning unit that runs in their bedroom, and they suspect that is why the, the noises were drained out. And then I just proceeded to give her my version. Um, my wife and I both told the story together. Um, what we had experienced, and um, then we left. Mr. Johnson, uh, you said, and I think correctly so, <coughs> because we have a photo taken in February, the same month, of the density of the leaves of the poplar trees in front of your house. And why I say this? Because we've seen a police photo where it's, the leaves are far less dense because it was taken late in the year. But I think you correctly said yesterday that your view was obscured to the us. The trees, and I think the density of the leaves there at that time, the incident, obscured your view that is to correct, the house of Mr. Pistorius. That is correct. Mm. Now, I'm interested if you would share that with the court to understand about the security measures the next morning, or the steps, first steps, to do something about security at your house. What was that? I beg your pardon, can you just repeat the could question? You, could you just explain that again, the steps that you took? And in particular, I've got your evidence, but I need to know I understand your wife got up at 5 o'clock and you got up at 4 o'clock. Can I, my lady, what, yes, if course. I can just clarify what I meant to explain yesterday was I got, after the incident, we still lay in bed, I couldn't sleep around 4 o'clock, a rough estimate of the time. I got up, went downstairs, and I fetched my tape measure from the garage and I measured the openings of our sliding doors. I then went back to, to the bedroom and lay in the bed. And the way I remember, we got up around 5 o'clock that morning. It takes us approximately an hour to get to work after we arise. So uh, as I've explained, I was planning on installing 
security gates in front of the sliding doors. There I took the measurements. And when I got to the office the next morning, I recall searching on the internet more information about security gates. Mr. Johnson, can I, I'm sorry to interrupt you, can I just take you back a little bit? My understanding, and it's again my understanding from your evidence today, is that because you had difficulty in sleeping, you got up at four o'clock, and of course, you want to make sure about security now. Your wife was still in bed. You did the security measurements, for, uh, measurements for security purposes. Get back into bed with your wife, and the two of you then woke up or got up at four, uh, five o'clock in the morning. That is correct, my lady. Now, what I also want you to explain is the you were at, you go to work now. You're at work, and then you had a conversation, a telephonic conversation with your wife to tell the court about that. About you have now heard news about Oscar Pistorius. You get, you receive information. That is the part. You know where I am? Yes, I, yes. I do. Must I elaborate? Or? Just that part, just dealing with that. <laughs> that part of your evidence. The phone call, the details of the phone call between you and your wife. My lady, I can't recall the detail of the conversation, but if I can summarize, in essence, what I recall we discussed was I asked her to repeat what she had heard. And then, and the reason I did that was I was, I was surprised when I had learned what the incident was. Mr. Pistorius, what did you tell her? What was your information? Uh, Mr. Johnson, Mr. I'm Johnson. sorry. I don't know where I get Pretorius from. I apologize. Mm. What was your information about the incident and what did you tell your wife about that? Um, what I said to her is that we, I'd heard from Mr. Willem Force and also a colleague of mine confirmed an internet report that the Olympic athlete, Mr. Oscar Pistorius, had been involved in a shooting incident at his house where he had shot his girlfriend. Yeah, I, I think you said that, yes, I will read to see if that's correct. You say that he had heard, what he had heard was that the Olympic athlete, Mr. Oscar Pistorius, had shot his girlfriend. And then you expressed a surprise. But that was the source of, that was the detail of your information. That's the essence of the message that I yeah. conveyed, yes. So all that you could have told your wife, of course, then, was what you knew at the time. And that was that you were told that the Olympic athlete, Mr. Oscar Pistorius, had shot his girlfriend. That, that would have been the sole information that you had, because that was your source. I would imagine so, yes, yes. my lady. Now, you tell her that. What happened? What did she say to you about this? She was as surprised as I was. Um, we were, as I explained earlier, convinced that it was a housebreak because we heard a lady and a man scream. Your voice is getting softer again. My apologies, ma'am. Um, what I said was she was as surprised as I was when I found out the first time. Um, as I explained in my testimony yesterday, we, we, we thought that it, would, it was a housebreak due to the fact that we heard a man and a woman screaming for help. My understanding is, and if I also look at your evidence, is that your surprise was that it was not an armed robbery or a housebreaking incident, but a domestic violence. That was the surprise. That is how I describe it, yes, my lady. And that, that was what it was all about? Nothing more, nothing less? I can't recall, my lady, if we yes. discussed any other information. <coughs> Would you just bear with me? Now, what I'm trying to find out is this. You took the, and I'm coming back to security, you took the measurements, you go back to bed, you and your wife woke up or got up at five o'clock and you go your different ways to work. 
What happened then further with security? You surfed in net. When was that? Before you left or at work? It was, my lady, it was when, after I got to work, um, I waited until, I wanted to phone Mr. Willem, Willem the Force, or Willem Force, beg your pardon. Um, but I didn't want, didn't want to disturb him before seven o'clock. And I was still convinced it was a house robbery. So between that hour, probably between six and seven, um, that morning at the office, I re did research on the internet. You, uh, your wife must, I mean, the security must have been a big concern now to you. Yes, at that point we were convinced that we need to improve our security. If you say we were convinced, it makes sense to me that you had a discussion with your wife and to say, well, we must increase, we must update this. Um, my lady, I can't recall if we had discussed it or whether it was my own initiative. Um, I'm the man in the house, so I take responsibility for our physical uh, safety and security. You, so. you said it, must. You say we were convinced that. You, you spoke in the plural. Too. I use the term we loosely. Can I, if I can rephrase, then I was convinced. But, but if you're concerned about security and also by using the we, it would, but forget about it, maybe a mistake. It just would make good sense that you share that with your wife. You, you would say to her, well, we must do something about security. I'm taking measurements. I'm going to talk to people. We have to upgrade. Or would you just keep it away from her? I beg your pardon? Can you please just repeat the last statement? Or would you just keep it away with, from her? Or would you discuss it with her? No, 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 no. We, that's definitely something we would discuss. Um, yeah. If I remember correctly, it's a long time ago, I left the notepad with the measurements and the tape measure on the island in the kitchen. Um, and I rechecked the measurements the following morning. I'm 90% sure of that. And I think that's when my wife perhaps became aware of the fact that I might have plans of, yes. but I mean, those details weren't important to me. Yeah. But I mean, it was, a, it was a concern that it was now this incident that you interpreted to be a housebreak or a house robbery. It, it was so serious to you security-wise that it caused you to get up four o'clock in the morning you're together in bed again, getting up five o'clock, and it would just make good sense that it would be discussed the concerns. She would have concerns about it, you would have concerns about it. Or am I wrong about that? It's a fair assumption to make. I <coughs> cannot recall yes. what level of detail discussion we had on the security measures, my lady. Mr. Johnson. Would you please tell the court Would you please tell the court about the notes that you made and whether your wife also made notes? <coughs> You know where, where I am now, not security notes? After now getting advice from Advocate Meritz to make notes. What, uh, my lady, what exactly? What did you do? Give me the process. Would you give the process to the court? Uh, what notes did you make? Did you sit together and make notes? Um, my lady, I was at the office when I made my notes and I think I revised them that evening probably in our study. I have no, I don't know where my wife was when she made her notes. It was completely separate. And as I said, we, we didn't discuss the content of our personal notes. So must I understand from that you don't know if your wife made notes or do you know, but you made it separately? I, my lady, I know that she did make notes to herself. So she made notes and you made notes, but you did it separately and independently? That is correct, my lady. And what happened then to your notes? My lady, I kept it on my um, personal laptop. I'm not, I can't recall whether I had sent Advocate Meritz a copy. And what else did you do with it? Did you give it to the police? No, my lady, I did not. And when the, 
the laptop that you made it on, do you still have that laptop so that we can see the time of making the notes or can you remember the time? Um, Milady, I think I've, my laptop was replaced uh, with a new version, but I have a, a backup folder where that note was saved. Yeah, it's not difficult, you know, to see when the note was made. That, that's easy to establish. Uh, I asked you in the beginning because I would like to see the notes and you were willing to share that with us. Is it possible, Milady, that I may ask for adjournment at this point just to have access to the notes? <coughs> Back half past eleven. As you saw there, IT designer Charles Johnson was expected back on the